أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وهو الأول والآخر والظاهر الباتن وهو بكل شيء عليم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغرك والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى سراتك مستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقتار العظيم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I've been given this um, enormous task of trying to, to, to convey uh, something of the reality of Tarabiya um, uh, our brother uh, Sidi Khalid mashallah he, he's good at um, making catchy titles um, however I don't feel that I, I I'm someone who can give you the, the reality of Tarabiya I'm only someone who can speak uh, to some things uh, regarding Tarabiya uh, from my own experience and my own experience with uh, uh, one of the inheritors of uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Niaz in today's time, uh, Sheikh Mohammed al Sisi. And so the first thing that we have to understand is that Sheikh Ibrahim Niaz, radiallahu anhu, he is not a Sheikh who is um, starting his own tariqah. And he's not a, he's not someone who is starting his own tariqa. He's not someone who is giving tarabiya in a vacuum. You know, he's not coming with his own, you know, version of tarabiya. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Niaz is someone who is giving tarabiya within the framework of the tariqa tijaniya. And we know this. Because in his letters, the Sheikh radiallahu anhu, he is, you know, he is uh, often says that Sheikh Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu is the only Sheikh of the Tariqa, and so all of this Tarabiya that that you know um, he brought, and the Tarabiya that the people give uh, on his behalf, you know, his inheritors give on his behalf, it's all, you know. Um, contained within the framework of the, of the Tariqa Tijaniya. Um, and it's not something new. Uh, it's not something uh, novel in the world. It's something that has always happened. You know, um, people have always had uh, Tarabiya or spiritual training in, um, at the hands of people who are authorized to do it. And so um, the first thing that we need to know is what is tarabiya? What is tarabiya? So the Arabic word tarabiya, it comes from the same root as rab. It comes from the same root as rab, or rabbaba. And that root means to give somebody or to take care of somebody um, at every moment and to give them everything that they need and everything and all of their sustenance from the time uh, that they uh, they begin to exist until you know they end their existence ends. So that that particular um, attribute and that definition only belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and only belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So the first and foremost, and the re in reality the only murabbi is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And everyone else, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on down, that, that do tarabiyah, they do it with the authorization of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So that's the first thing. Now, tarabiyah has several technical definitions. So now the first, you know, the, the general technical definition of tarabiyah in the Arabic language is basically education. And it, ref it really and truly refers to the early childhood education in which the child receives uh, discipline and learns manners and learns the basic uh, 
uh, the basic subjects of math, science, and, and things of, of that nature to prepare the child for you know further advanced studies and for and for life. And so that that's the 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 technical definition, uh, general technical definition. And then there's a technical definition in in Islam. And you know they, we we divide it. In reality, is not divided, but we divide it into the tarabia, you know, of you know of you know the basic knowledge that every Muslim needs to have, and the tarabia of getting to know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And that, in reality, there's no separation. However, we we separate it in order to to be able to organize our time and organize you know our priorities. And so the first. You know, the Tarabiyah that has to do with, you know, requisite knowledge is, you know, knowledge of uh, purification, knowledge of the the uh, obligatory worship, knowledge of the obligatory aqidah, um, knowledge of, of the obligatory beliefs about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and about, you know, the, the, um, the unseen matters. And then we have Tarabiyah. On and and you know this would also extend once one is um, morally responsible uh, to the knowledge related to one's how one makes his uh, living, and once he gets married to the knowledge of how one you know of um, the fiqh and the uh, the fiqh and the adab of marriage, and then if one has children the fiqh and adab of having and raising children, all of these things are part and parcel of the, this tarabiya related to the knowledge that one must have as a Muslim. And then we come to the technical definition of the, of the Sufis. And in reality, there are several, many, many different definitions of tarabiya. Um, we're going to stick to um, what the author of Mizab Rahmat al um defines, how he defines Tarabiya. And he said that Tarabiya is that you take someone, you know, step by step through the stages of, you know, of submission or the stages of Islam until they reach Ihsan. And so, this is this is how he describes tarabiya and this has many different manifestations and many different stages and each each sheikh has his own way of tarabiya so the basic tarabiya of the tariqat janiya is first shukr and um alhamdulillah that uh, sister fara her uh, or dr fara her, her presentation came before mine and and she uh focused a lot on shukr and so the basic tarabiya of the tariqa tijaniya is shukr and we see this in you know Shaykh ibrahim niyas where his focus his primary focus was on manifesting the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives and being thankful for such blessings and how to treat such blessings and so we we uh, we see uh, first of all, you know for example that the Shaykh radiallahu anhu he goes into what the fat or the the opening that the Sufis talk about is, and he says the the fat or the opening or the illumination is a divine breeze that catches hold of the murid and drives him into the and carries him into the divine presence then if he is righteous and, and, and righteous and god fearing it remains if not it recedes or it, it withdraws itself and he be, it becomes like a person who has seen something that he likes in a dream you know and and only remembers it and so here we have the sheikh giving us what we must do you know, first of all, he's assigning the fat as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not, 
you know, it's not something that you deserve as a murid. It's not something that you are automatically going to get as a murid. And it's not something that somebody can promise you in a number of days. It's something that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives whenever he wills. And so even at the height of what Shaykh Ibrahim Niyas who is giving mm-hmm. the, his, the, his murids, he is reminding them that he is not the one who is giving it. Rather, it's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, you know, this, this knowledge that people, you know, many people, um, they brag about, you know, they, uh, they begin to, you know, uh, become pompous about, and they spread throughout, you know, the world online and, and in person, you know, they, you know, they went with their pomp and their, their bragging and their, you know, um, you know, they're, they're, they're being puffed up with pride about it. They are betraying the, the, uh, betraying the spirit of Sheikh Ibrahim because he saw it all as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not something that, that, you know, is intrinsic to our, to us. And he saw it as a blessing that one must give thanks for, and one must always, you know, um, always, uh, give thanks for and, and be grateful for, or it may be taken away from us. And, and so, and this is this is to show that Shaykh Ibrahim the Asr who he was steeped in the shukr and the gratefulness and the thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, Shaykh uh, Siti, uh, Siti and Dr. Farah, she actually she touched on you know the the idea that you know this this new age spirituality it talks a lot about thankfulness. But it's not, it, it's, it's an empty thankfulness because it removes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says, you know, you must be thankful, but thankful to who? It doesn't tell you. Thankful to what? It doesn't tell you. Thankful for what? It doesn't tell you. And so what the Tarabiyah of Shaykh Ibrahim, the Ashra, uh, that is steeped in shukr, you know, is designed to tell us to tell us who for what and you know and make us thankful for it 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 tells you who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it tells you you know what is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your very existence your very breath your very existence everything about you is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which you must give thanks, thankful, for, thankful, uh, thanks for. And so this is this is part of the Torah be of Shay Ibrahim the Ashra And the you know that it's first steeped in shukr, which is the Torah be of Shay Ahmed to January was shukr. Shay Ahmed to January who he would often remind you know his uh, he, he would give his students. Um, the, the weird of uh, Fatiha with the intention of shukr. And this is, you know, um, in order to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the blessings that he gives us inwardly and outwardly. He will remind people that everything, you know, is uh, everything that, you know, he was informed of was only a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they had to be thankful by remaining steadfast on Islam. You know, he um, in one letter, he said, everything that we have informed you about will happen without fail. However, you know, the uh, condition is that one not feel uh, safe from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his stratagem or from, from uh, destiny. And so that means that you always work towards you know work towards ihsan you know uh, shay ibrahim nias uh, says but you will not profit from this tariqa unless you are always uh, you're always acting righteously illa uh, and um 
that you're always right, uh, acting righteously. And so the, this is the essence of shukr. The essence of shukr is actually the essence of ubudiyah. You know, the essence of ubudiyah. And, and the essence of ubudiyah is alhamdulillah, is that you always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him for every blessing. And the blessings are without fail. You know, uh, Shaykh Ahmed Sukhaydi, who he says, you know, that these blessings are always coming upon us every at every moment, you know, and they never stop. And so one fails to give actually give the just um, gratitude, but one must try to give gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. And so the, the, the first, the basis of the Torabiyah and the Tariqah Tijaniya and, and the basis of, of the uh, Torabiyah that um, Shay Ibrahim Niyas was blessed with in, in you know, um, within the framework of the, of the Tariqah is uh, gratitude. And then he reminds people also that his Torabiyah is, is within the framework of the Tariqah by advising them to keep the awrad, you know, the awrad al lazima, and reminding them that all of what, you know, what they seek is contained in the awrad al lazima, you know, and this is something that, you know, if one keeps the awrad al lazima, he's doing the tarabiya. So in, um, in uh, Bulyat al Mustafid, city uh, al Arabi bin Sayyid, he says that you know this tariqah has a basic tarabiyah and the basis of tarabiyah is that you you know perform the the salats at that time and that you do the awrad you know diligently and that you uh, pay you know the the proper respect to the awrad and that you fill your time with salat al nabi so this is the basic uh tarabiyah and so uh Shay Ibrahim Niyas, you know, the first thing is that, you know, he encourages people to keep the salat at that time, you know, even, you know, and to do it in, in Jamaat. And he, he, um, he often reminds people to do to of the Jamaat, to do salat in Jamaat and to do Wadifa in Jamaat. And we find this, you know, this has a basis in, in, you know, um, and the teachings of Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, he, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, he came and he said, you know, that, you know, he told, um, let's see, uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim uh, Riyahi, he told him, you know, when he was going on a journey, he told him, if someone does not pray the Jama'at with you, then do not keep his company. And so this idea of praying salat at, at the proper time and in jama'ah is, you know, intrinsic to the tariqah. And Shaykh Ibrahim Niyash was not, you know, um, he was no, no, he was not, you know, he didn't contradict this. He, you know, the, one of the things that he did was establish the, the Jami Masjid. And where he, wherever he went, he established the salat on, you know, on time and in Jama'ah. And he established the Adkar, you know, the Wadifa and Halala in Jama'ah. And, you know, he he went as far as to, you know, say that that uh, those who don't do Wadifa and Jama'ah while they are, you know, um, able to, then they are in violation of the Tariqa. And so the basis of the Tarabiyah of Shaykh Ibrahim Niyash is the basis of the tarbiyah of the tariqah tijaniya is the salats on a, on time and in the congregation and the awrad al lazima then you know we come to the special tarbiyah and from you know in in mizab uh, rahmat al rabbaniya is obvious that you know, um, Sidi Ambuja, he recognized that there were muqaddams who could give the give the awrad, and there were muqaddams who could do tarabiyah for the murids. And Sidi Al Arabi bin Sah, 
he he explicitly states that there are muqaddams who are transmitted there are muqaddams who will give tarbiyah to the murid and and that the latter are people of special permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a dream or, or in waking vision or from one of the people, um, one of the people of special uh, special permission in his time. And so he actually, you know, um, the Isidia al-Arabi bin Sayyid, he actually divides Tarabiyya into the, the basic Tarabiyya, which is the Salats, the Awrad, and Salat al-Fati. And then the special Tarabiyya, and we can make the argument that up to, up to our time anyway, no muqaddam of Sheikh Ahmed Zijani anhu has manifest with a tarabiyah more, more successful than Sheikh Ibrahim Niyash anhu. And no muqaddam has produced as many people of tarabiyah, meaning that are able to do tarabiyah as Sheikh Ibrahim Niyash anhu. If you go anywhere you go, you will and and where the faida has reached, you will find a Khalifa of Shaykh Ibrahim who is able to you know help you in your tarabiyah. This is this is this is a, just a fact. And so, uh, what is the reality of that tarabiyah? The reality of that tarabiyah, or the the some of the reality of that tarabiyah, is that it acquaints you with certain knowledge of Allah and his existence and the existence of certain realities uh, in creation. And it, acquaint it gives you this knowledge so that you may work to become an Adif. So, and, you know, one of the things that, that we run into is that, um, as Muris, we believe that once we answer all the questions in Tarabiyah, then, you know, we are Arif. We are Arif Billah. You know, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? No, this is not the case. The case is, is, you know, the case is, you know, and is that, or the reality is that these are to prepare you to become an Arif. Because what is, what is an Arif? Or what is the, the arif or the know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is who is the real know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sheikh Ahmed Tijani anhu said, the real know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who recognizes each degree and gives each each of them their proper due. And so he re he recognizes the degree of divinity and he gives us his proper due. He recognizes the degree of, of prophethood. And he gives it gives it its proper due. He recognizes the degree of what wilaya of of you know wilaya of, of sainthood, and he gives it its pro proper due, and so on and so forth. And he recognizes everything in its proper degree, and gives and then he gives it its its uh, its its right over him. And so when we when we understand this, we should understand that. It's not a process that comes to an end. It's something that we have to constantly work on, and something that we have to constantly, uh, constantly try to achieve. You know, and we have to constantly look for more knowledge from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we check that knowledge with, with the Sheikh uh, to whom we are, um, our, our, uh, our, to whom we look for guidance, and we. And then we act upon that knowledge. And so um, it's not, you know, the, the process of answering questions, it comes to an end, but Tarabiyya never ends. You know, Sheikh Mahi has told, told many a murid that everything is Tarabiyya. And he has told us that Tarabiyya never ends. Tar tarabiyya always continues. You know, and why is that? Because first of all, Allah is the true Murabdi. And if Allah is infinite, there's no, there's, Allah has no end and no limit. Then how can the Tarabiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a limit or an end? 
we are always, you know, we should be always, you know, um, trying to achieve this um, this goal of give, of knowing, you know, each degree and giving each degree its proper due. And so we should always be working on ourselves, you know. Um, Sheikh Ma, he also told me once, you know, he told me that, you know, and this made me realize that, you know, this actually is where I realized that there's no end to this, that you have to keep going further and further and deeper and deeper, you know, in the, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he, he told me that people, you know, um, the, the sign that you have, you know, some permission or that somebody has some permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do da'wah or to do basically to, to call to Allah's presence, special permission to cause call, call to Allah's presence is facility. That is, it's easy, you know, it's it's easy for the person to do it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases his situation to do it. And so, and then he said, and people may have permission, but be told to conceal it, not to proclaim it, in order for the nafs not to have any any share of it. So what did this tell me? This told me that no matter how high you go, no matter how hard you work, you always have to work against your nafs. And you always have to, you always have work to do. So, you know, it's not like, you know, and, and you see this in Sheikh Mahi. Sheikh Mahi, you know, um, has guided many a murid, you know, through the process of Tarabiya. But, when Fajr comes, you see him on his prayer book. Until after the sunrise, doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Asr comes, you see him on his prayer book, he does the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he is always at Wadifa. You know, so these things, you know, th this is the example we should follow. You know, and and we can be sure that Sheikh Mahi is following the example that he saw in Sheikh Hassan Sisi. And Sheikh Hassan Sisi was following the example that he saw in Sheikh Ibrahim Yas. And Sheikh Ibrahim Niaz was, was, you know, following the example of the Tarabi of Sheikh Ahmed Zijani, that he received first from, you know, his shuyukh, and then, you know, um, through a special permission from Allah SWT and from, from the Hadra of Sheikh Ahmed Zijani. And so these, these, you know, this is where the example that we should follow. We should understand that Tarabiya is um is for us to first get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the basics, and then to go through life getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and getting a, and improving our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our goal. And so Tarabiya has no end. And so th this this is this is um, I, I I'm sorry I'm there's a lot of diatribes but taking it back so apart from the basic tarabiya there's special tarabiya and what is Shaykh Ibrahim Niyaz who in the beginning of his of the tarabiya of all murids what do they receive they receive to do salat al fatihi at three different times. And, you know, this is also contained in, in, the, um, in the, the guidance of Sheikh Ahmed Zijani where uh, Sheikh Ahmed Zijani said, you should set aside, you know, um, times in which you will complete turn, completely turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through some sort of worship. And the best of those is Salat al nabi the, the prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and he further said in the morning, in the morning, in the evening, and in, and in the middle of the night, in the, in the depth of the night. And so, Shaykh Ibrahim Niyash, his Tarabiyah is following Shaykh Ahmed Jani, in, in that. And so the, the 
reality is that Sheikh Ibrahim Niyash, his tarabiyah is completely within the framework of Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, and it is a way for you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, first and foremost, and then to grow in that knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are some conditions for that, you know, and one of the conditions, you know, that uh, Shaykh Ibrahim Niyash, the Allah anhu, one of the conditions that he set, and this is also, um, this is not something new, but one of the conditions that he set is that if you take the tariqah for barakah, then you may go to any mu, any muqaddam you want. You know, if you take the, the tariqah for barakah, then, then you go, go to any muqaddam you want. But if you take it for tarabiyah and you arrive at the hands of one of the muqaddams of tarabiyah, then you should stick to that one muqaddam of tarabiyah and you don't go anywhere else. And, uh, you know, one of the, the things that Sheikh Mahi really allowed who um and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him um Habibullah um told me was you know you should if you find a water source source then dig yourself a well and turn away from the wells of everybody else and so if you if you go come to a sheikh of Tarabiya and the Tariqa Tijaniya then you should focus your focus should turn from trying to find a sheikh or trying to find who who's the best sheikh and all this. This should not be your focus. Your focus should and completely shift to okay. I'm I found someone. I found water, which is water in in, um, in the Sufi terminology is a uh, is is a uh, metaphor that they use for different things, but many times it, it's a metaphor for ma'rifa, uh, for knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's a ma'rifa. Uh, it's, it's a metaphor for um, um, um for um the the blessing or the the uh the success in the path. And so if you come across a source of water, you know, which is the Sheikh of Tarabiya, then your focus should shift from finding the Sheikh or finding a source of water to digging for that water and digging your well so that it is um so that it is a plentiful source of water for you meaning you should your focus should shift to focusing on your tarabiya and focusing on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that it is a sufficient source of knowledge and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what you should that's where your focus should shift and so Sheikh Ibrahim, he, has, he puts that as one of the main conditions. And this is not something unheard of. You know, um, uh, Siri al-Ahsan al-Baqili, um, both in um, in his uh, Iraat and in his Sharh of Jawahir al-Ma'ani also says the same thing. And if you find many of the people of Tarabiya, they will also f say the same thing. That if you find a, tar a muqaddam of Tarabiya, then you submit yourself to that muqaddam and you leave everybody else. That doesn't mean that you don't respect everybody else. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, you can't learn from anyone else. It just means that you look for your, 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 um, you look to your sheikh for the source of what you need. And so that's, that's uh, one of the conditions. And, you know, the other condition is that you keep going. You know, Shay Ibrahim the Ashbara is on one who he said that he has nothing to do with the Majdub who is not Salik. He has nothing to do with the person who is enraptured but does not obey the Sharia. And he has nothing to do with the Salik who is not enraptured. And so, you know, um it the the person who who is uh obedient to the to the, the sharia but doesn't look you know, to be open to the divine presence. And so you must join between them. And, you know, you once you are given this gift of, you know, entering tariqah and then doing this, the process of tarabiya, in which you come to know some things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you must keep going. You know, when, when people become stagnant, Shaykh Hassan Sisi used to say 
you know, when water becomes stagnant, it gets dirty. And so when you don't, when you stop moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or moving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you become dirty. And so, unless you keep um, trying to achieve ihsan. And so um, the reality of Tarabiyah is that it, or the the one some of the realities of Tarabiya is that you find a sheikh or a muqaddam of Tarabiya and that you focus on working on yourself. You don't focus on anything else except for working on yourself and trying to be better each day at your knowledge and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you were yesterday. And so I'm going to close with that, inshallah, and uh, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that he provide us with, with uh, true ma'rifah and ma'rifah that can be found in the Qur'an and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that he grant us true following of our shayukh, true following of, of the path of Shaykh Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu, and of the guidance of you know, our uh, wasila, uh, Shaykh Ibrahim Niyas, and that he grant us true, you know, following of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are always trying to improve, who are always moving towards him, and uh, of those who are always grateful, you know, because that is the key. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are grateful, then we will, we will give you increase. And so, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are always grateful, you know, of what, for what they have and, you know, for what they recognize that they have and for, what, for that which they do not recognize that they have. And when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our shuyukh and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to maintain uh, our Shaykh Muhammad al Mahi Sisi um, in good health and good spirits and that he allow us to benefit from him. Ameen. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Amin, amin, amin. Thank you so much, uh, Imam Talud, uh, for the insightful talk on Tarbiya. So we've come to the end of the Ibrahim uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Nias, uh, conference. Uh, so please, uh, you see the link uh, on the screen over here, uh, bit.ly Senegal Health Center. Please um, do your part to contribute because uh, this, this initiative will help about 30,000 villages. Yes, and uh, also do check out uh, the further the future programs with uh, with Saul he has on our Instagram and now on Facebook, uh, all the social media platforms. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah.